grow some edible hair? And how could geology affect the structures and buildings around us? Let's find out. Welcome to Science at Six. My name's Mandy and I'm this week's presenter in the centre. Welcome back to our weekly series. We've got some great things to explore. You can find out where to get our activities in the description below and you can email us your results and questions to openupscience at cambridgesciencecentre.org. This week we asked you to investigate the pH of some household substances. Now, as a reminder, pH is a measure of how acidic or basic something is. It's a number from 0 to 14. From 0 to 6 are acids, 7 is neutral and 8 to 14 are bases. One way to find out the pH of something is to use an indicator. This is typically a chemical which will change colour depending on how acidic or basic the substance is. Last week we shared an activity to make an indicator from red cabbage. Red cabbage contains a chemical called anthocyanin that changes colour at different pHs which makes it a good indicator. We challenged you to use this indicator to test different household substances with parent or guardian's permission of course. Now let's take a look at a couple ourselves. So here is some red cabbage indicator I made earlier. It's currently purple, which means it's neutral, so not acidic and not basic. So to start with, we're going to look at something you might have had on your chips. Vinegar. So, starting with our purple indicator, let's watch what happens when I add some vinegar. Can you see what's happened? It's changed from purple to a pinkish colour. So let's see what happens if we try something different. So there we've got our purple indicator here. And I'm going to add some baking soda or bicarbonate of soda to the purple indicator. Give it a There, can you see this one's turned blue? From, turned the indicator from purple to blue. Why has this happened? Do you remember the word from earlier, anthocyanin? Well, that's the chemical that changes colour when it encounters an acid or a base. In an acid, the indicator will change from purple to pink and red. The stronger the red, the stronger the acid. In a base, the indicator started to become greener, so it goes from blue to green to yellow, and the more yellowy the liquid becomes, the more basic the substance is. So that means vinegar is acidic and baking soda is basic. You may have remembered that from last week's erupting volcano activity. So there you go, now you know a bit more about the pH of some of the substances and foods around you every day. Now my friend Katie is going to take a look at some of the things you've sent in. Hi, my name is Katie and I'm going to be looking at some of the work you have done this week. So it seems the pH testing has been very popular, with Karen and Kate creating a very nice scale of different household substances and their pHs. And Becky sent us in a collage of all the work they have been doing this week. Anya and family even had a video call with friends while doing the pH testing. And we even had Camilla and her family get very creative with the red cabbage indicator, deciding to tie dye some t-shirts by using the red cabbage indicator and its color changing ability by adding some acids and bases to create a really nice effect. And I bet the t-shirts look great. So keep sending us in pictures of your activities and your solutions to the weekly challenge, as we would love to see how you get on and you may even see your work featured next Monday. We've also had some questions sent in, with Ryan asking us to clarify what it means if something is basic. Well, when something is basic, it, is, it means it is a base, and a base can be thought of as opposite to an acid, as the pH is at the other end of the scale to the acids. They also have another ability, in that they can react with acids and neutralise them. We also had a question specifically about an acid. We have a very strong acid inside of our stomachs called hydrochloric acid, and this has a pH of three, 
so quite a long way down the scale. We need this to digest the food we eat. But Rachel, age 12, asked us, why doesn't the acid in our stomach burn us from the inside? Well, as well as producing this hydrochloric acid, our stomachs also produce mucus, a slimy liquid, like the slimy stuff that comes out of our noses. This mucus forms a layer around our stomachs, creating a barrier between the strong hydrochloric acid and the lining of our stomachs, protecting us from the acid. This is very important to keep our stomach healthy so the digestive system can carry on working and so we don't get burned by the acid. Thank you both for sending us in your questions. And if you have any questions about this week's topic, make sure to send them in and we will answer some this time next Monday. Great questions, everyone. Keep sending us your results and questions to openupscience at cambridgesciencecentre.org. Now for something a little different. I mentioned at the start, growing some hair you can eat. Well, another of my friends here at the centre, Joe, is going to show you how to get creative when growing your own cress. Hello, my name's Joanne, and I'm one of the science communicators here at Cambridge Science Centre. And I've got a quick little activity for you to do that uses up some of those things that you might have around the house that you would otherwise throw away. So today we're gonna to be making something called a cress head and we're gonna be making it out of an old pair of tights. So you're gonna to have to cut the toe off your tights, first of all, so you have a tube of tights, like that. Next thing you have to do is, in one end, tie a knot in one end of your tights. And then, I'm sure you've all got some old flower pots lying about in the garden, so we're gonna reuse the flower pots as well. Stretch your tights over the flower pot so you've got a little bowl. The next thing we need are some cress seeds. You can buy these in the garden centres. You might even have some in your house already. So sprinkle some cress seeds into your tights bowl. Okay. And those cress seeds are gonna need something to grow in. So we're gonna add some compost. And you want to get it nice and full of compost. Okay. And then take the tights off the top of your um, plant pot. And this will be the start of your little cress head. Tie a knot in the bottom of the tights. And if you want, you can just cut off the excess bit there. Now comes the fun part. I quite like to keep this little bit on the top because it looks like a little bit of hair. And this is where your crest is gonna pop out of the top of your crest head eventually. So if you grab a little bit of compost and tights, and I'm gonna use an old loom band. I'm pretty sure everyone's got loom bands lying about the house. I'm gonna make a little nose for my crest head, just like that. And then you can decorate the um, face with pens or you can stick bits of paper on. I'm going to stick a couple of little sticky felt eyes that I made earlier onto the top of it. And there we go. And then we need to think about what that crest is going to need to grow. So you're going to have to water your crest head. That's why I use felt for the um, eyes. So you need to put it in a sunny windowsill on a tray, give it lots of water, and soon you will start to see the little bits of crest sprouting out of the top of your crest head. When that happens, just give it a little bit of a help by cutting off the top knot of your crest head. And then as the crest grows, you're gonna have a nice little green crest hair on your little crest head. And the good thing is, you can eat the cress as well. That's brilliant. Thank you, Joan. Now, don't worry if you can't remember all the steps. The activity sheet for cress heads is available in the description. If you make your own cress heads this week, we'd love to see it. Send us a picture of your creation to openupscience at cambridgesciencecentre.org. So, that activity is a lot of fun, but why are we using cress? 
well, cress seeds don't need that much to grow. As long as they get enough water and a bit of light, they don't need much room. They can even grow on a damp piece of kitchen roll. This makes them great for planting in this way. And once they start to grow, they'll head towards the light and out of the soil and will quickly look like a full head of hair. This will happen fairly quickly, only taking around a week to grow tall enough to give your cress head a great hairstyle or to give you some cress to eat following giving your cress head a haircut. Now we're going to meet Francis, who is a technical manager at Semex. My friend Mia had a chat with him to find out what he does. All right, hello Francis. Thank you very much for joining me today. So you're a technical manager at Semex. Now, what is Semex and what does a technical manager do? So um, Semex is a building materials firm. We operate globally. And essentially we supply building materials to, uh, to sites that want to build hospitals, schools, anything that requires concrete aggregate, we, um, we supply it. A technical manager is essentially uh, someone that's part of the quality assurance team. So we have to ensure that the quality of the product is what the client expects and uh, sometimes even, even better than what they expect. And that, that's my main role. Oh, amazing. So what does the day in a life of a technical manager look like then? So it, it's pretty, it varies. So um, I could be on site having meetings with our clients to discuss what they need from us and then to explain what we can do. Um, I could be on our plant, for example, testing concrete and analysing that data. Or in the middle, the fun times, I could be on site handing out donuts and sweets to, to our clients just to ensure that communication is, uh, is there, really. Wow, amazing. So no day, two days look the same. That's, that's really cool. So what, what routes in education and school and university did you take to get to your role as a technical manager? So uh, during secondary school, my, my key subjects really firstly was PE, then geography and then maths. Mm -hmm. And then when I went into sixth form, it was geography, uh, PE again and uh, biology. And then I studied the petroleum geology undergrad and engineering geology masters which is essentially the study of rocks and spending a lot of time outside but a lot of the time behind the computer as well to analyze data and that's it in a nutshell really oh it's really interesting so i can see why you went into building materials then but is does everyone in your team have a similar background or do people have different routes to get to where you are well if we look at my immediate london team it being in london is extremely diverse uh, in terms of age, gender, ethnicity, um, and the wider Semex is pretty diverse as well. And that, that's the same in terms of the route into the company. Um, the key thing I would say is once most people get in, they don't really leave. So that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah, they've obviously enjoy it there then. Proud of the work they do. Definitely. Fantastic. And finally, there's one more question. I want to know someone who inspires you. So, um, I'll have to go with my mum on this one, with my dad, close second, very close second. Um, essentially, my mum has just shown me like what a combination of being personable, hardworking, and uh, being able to solve problems. So she started as uh, part of the admin team in the NHS, which is a super vital role, but she worked her way up to be general manager of um, Imperial College. So that's something I'd like to do in Semex, really. Wow, that's amazing. All right, that's all we've got time for, but thank you so much for joining me today, Francis. Thank you. Cheers, take care, bye. Thank you, Francis, for talking to us. Well, that's almost the end. Just time to introduce our new theme for the week, which links into those crest heads. It's all about plants. Plants are amazing living things and can do something that no animal can. They use sunlight to make their own food. Find out more about them this week and you can get started now. Our first activity is in the description below. Don't forget to send us your questions and pictures of your work. We'll take a look at some next Monday on Science at Six. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you have a great week and we'll see you next Monday.